Hey guys! I am so sorry that it is so late in the day because I forgot to be on at 2. I'm so sorry we got home from church. We went to the late service and got lunch because we were starving and cleaned up the kitchen and I just got in my zone and totally spaced it and I am so sorry. I'll need a little help getting used to this routine, but truly if this two o'clock live time doesn't work or 3.30, we'll test that out too, uh, please let me know what a better time would be. I am, I love input and I would love your input. I would love for you to share your thoughts with me about what will best work for everybody. So please, please, please feel free to do that. Give me one second. Love, can you turn the fan on please? Yes. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, it's a little different around here for us too. The kids are playing a little more and hopefully um, there won't be noises that interrupt us. So, good afternoon. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope that you are well. And it was so good to see some of you this morning in church. We missed you so much. And I look forward to making new plans and figuring out new stuff as time goes on. So for today's lesson, can you please follow me? You can't follow me really, but can you do this? Can you follow me and do that? How about, can you do this? Can you pat your head? And can you rub your belly and pat your head at the same time? How's that going? That's a hard thing to follow. Can you follow me and touch your nose? And touch your nose. Can you do that? What about, can you follow me? This is called crossing your midline. It's really important. Can you do this? Cross, open, cross, open, cross, open, cross, open. Did you follow me and do it too? Cross, open, cross, open. How are you doing at following me? Did you do a good job? I hope so, because that's what we're talking about today. So, why did you follow me? And why do we follow other people? Why did you decide to do some of the things that I do or did? Did you follow me because it was fun? Did you follow me because you wanted to try something new? That's a good reason to follow people. Sometimes we follow people because we know it's gonna be safe. Maybe you're following your parents in the grocery store or you're at an event and you need to stay close to them. Following them keeps you safe, doesn't it? So that's really important reason to follow somebody. Who else do you follow? So we follow teachers, don't we, when they say, Come this way, it's time to go to the cafeteria, or come this way, um, let's go outside, or maybe you follow their directions. Maybe they say it's time to quiet down, or it's time to do your work, it's time to get in a circle. We follow teachers. Who else do we follow? We follow parents, because they tell us when to go to bed, when to brush our teeth, when to wash our hands. So we follow them. We follow them in stores. We also follow, maybe you have a friend who's really good at making games and you follow their directions for all these fun games that you play. Maybe you follow people in video games around in Minecraft or something, I don't know. <laughs> I don't play video games. But there's a lot of following that we do, don't we? And it makes life a lot more fun and interesting to learn a different way to do things because you're following someone else. So last week, we talked about who. Does anybody remember his really huge name? It starts with a Z, Zach, and then it gets weird, Kius. Zacchaeus is who we talked about last week who climbed up in the tree so that he could see Jesus. And Jesus wanted to be his friend when no one else did. Well, guess what? There's another tax collector in the Bible that nobody wanted to hang out with and that Jesus chose to hang out with. 
Zacchaeus wasn't the only one. And this one even got called to be a special follower of Jesus, not just a friend that Jesus went to his house. He got special duty. So we're going to talk about him today. So here you see our tax collector. Now remember, we talked about how taxes are money that the government, the Roman government would tell the Jews, you need to give us this money. And so the tax collector's job was to say, hey Jews, give me this money so I can give to the Roman government. But you know what else? You owe me more than what the Roman government wants me to give. You owe me some extra. And you know what that extra, they would end up keeping it, which is basically stealing, isn't it? So these tax collectors, would take the money that belonged to the Roman government and go ahead and give it to the Roman government, but required the people to bring him extra, and that he kept for himself. And so these people didn't like him very much, all those tax collectors, and even though he was very wealthy and the Romans loved him, his own people didn't because he was stealing from them. He, they, they didn't owe him that money but he required it of them or they would be in trouble. So we're gonna meet this man, one of them, named Matthew. And so his story comes from the book of Matthew. Now I left my Bible way far again, but you guys know what a Bible looks like, don't you? So in the book of Matthew is where our story comes from, where Jesus meets him for the first time. So can you say this with me? Taxes, taxes, pay your taxes here. Taxes, pay your taxes here. Can you say that? Maybe he yelled that. So Matthew though, didn't have very many friends, remember? And so people called him a sinner because he stole. And the Bible says not to steal from others. That's a sin. And so people called him a sinner and they weren't his friends and they didn't want to be around him, and they thought that he would be a bad influence on them if they were around him. And so they didn't want anything to do with him. They didn't want to go to his house. They didn't want to sit by him. Nothing. Pretty sad, isn't it? He did naughty things and didn't have any friends. So one day, Jesus was walking down the road where Matthew's shop was where he did his tax collecting. And Jesus walked over to Matthew and he loved Matthew. He loves all of us, doesn't he? Whether we've sinned or whether we are still sinning, whether our sins hurt other people, like these people, the Jews, it hurt them, it made them more poor. So Jesus still loved him though. But Jesus wanted him to stop stealing he wanted him to see that he was loved by, by God and he wanted him to do the right thing, just like he wanted Zacchaeus to. So Jesus told Matthew, follow me. I want you to be my helper. All the people saw was this man is stealing and Jesus says, follow me. You need to be my helper. Do you think those people got upset because... um? He's a bad guy. What, what are you doing, Jesus? They did get upset. But see, Jesus knew Matthew. Remember, we talked about how Jesus knows us. And so Jesus knew Matthew, and Jesus loved Matthew. And Jesus knew that Matthew had some special gifts that he wanted him to be a part of his special 12 helpers. And so Jesus wanted Matthew to start doing the right things and stop stealing so that he could be one of Jesus' special, special helpers. And so Jesus and his friends said, we're going to your house too to have dinner. And again, all the people were like, what are you doing? You can't go to his house, he's a sinner. But Jesus said, I love you and I want you to do the right thing. So let me come teach you and talk to you about God's love and about making better choices and doing the right thing, not stealing anymore. So let's pretend we're those people who are mad. How come you're talking to sinners 
who are mean to us because of love. Because Jesus loved him and knew that he was so much more than his sin and so much more than his bad choices. Jesus wasn't worried at all about all the judgments of the people or how rude they were being to Matthew. Jesus loved Matthew and he was ready to be his friend. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you too. And no matter what you've done, Jesus believes in you. He gave you gifts. He gave you special skills that he wants to teach you and use you to do, to do good things with them and to share love with other people. So Jesus wants to be your friend, just like he was Matthew's friend. And Matthew became one of Jesus' special 12 followers that followed him all over the area where they were, telling people about God's love. And when Jesus died and went to heaven, Matthew continued to tell people and spread the news that the Savior had come. That's the way that Jesus changes lives. Isn't that so neat? Going from someone who was despised by people as a sinner to someone who's written about in the Bible for doing wonderful things for Jesus. Because Jesus changes hearts and he changes lives. So let's review our lesson. Were you listening? Who did Jesus ask to follow him? It was Matthew. Matthew, that's even a common name now, and that's probably why, because Matthew turned into a wonderful person, and people named their kids after him in the Bible. Maybe you know somebody named Matthew. Well, it started because of the Matthews in the Bible. That's pretty neat. And Jesus ate dinner with Matthew, and who else? His other followers and the other sinners. That's right. He ate dinner with them, even though it made other people upset, Jesus said, I love these people too. And how did Matthew change after he met Jesus? This is kind of a hard one for some of you. How did Matthew change? Did he stop stealing? Yep. And he followed Jesus? And he... Um, was very good at telling people about Jesus for the rest of his life. Yep. So let's go over our memory verse. Our new memory verse reminds us that just like Jesus cared for Matthew, God cares for you too. So it comes from 1 Peter 5, 7, and it goes, He cares for you. Do you remember it? He cares for you. He cares for you. First Peter 5, 7. First Peter 5, 7. Can you guys say it? He cares for you. First Peter 5, 7. Let's sing it one more time. He cares for you. He cares for you. First Peter 5, 7. First Peter 5, 7. I love that memory verse. So simple, so true, and so powerful to hide in your heart. No matter where you are or what you're doing, God cares for you. Just like he cared for Matthew and Zacchaeus when they felt like they had no other friends. And I'm sure some of you have had moments in your life where you felt like you had no friends, especially during coronavirus and you can't really see any friends and schools haven't really started regular and everyone's all over the place. God cares for you. He can be your very best friend. So let's go over some fun ways you can think about this story at home. If you have some play kitchen stuff or even some real kitchen stuff, you can have your own special supper. So you can pretend to be Jesus and you can have a pretend Matthew and make a big feast for everybody and celebrate God's love. It can be a real feast or a pretend feast, whatever age you are, whatever you can do. Pretend to have a great big feast to celebrate God's love and that he cares for you. Another fun thing is to play follow the leader just like we did a minute ago. Remember that? You can play that at home. 
So you can be Jesus and someone else can be Matthew or the parents can be Jesus or your siblings. And someone else can be Matthew. You can walk around the room following each other, doing silly things like waving your arms or walking while you pat your head or maybe picking your legs up really high and marching. Play some really fun following games. We can follow each other like that or we can follow God by reading his word and doing what it says. There's lots of ways you can follow things. You could also play Simon Says. That's a following game too. So if Simon says laugh, you laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, you follow him. But if Simon doesn't say it, don't do it because you can't follow Simon if he didn't say it. So if the person says laugh, you better not laugh because Simon didn't say. So that's a fun following game to teach us how to follow even better. And there's more ideas on the paper that I'm going to post for you below this video, like I always do, and some fun coloring pages. And you can talk about this lesson and talk about how important it is to follow after God and to let his love fill your heart and know that he cares for you. And I hope that you also learned how important it is to love other kids and to be a friend to other kids who maybe other people aren't being nice to. We have Jesus inside of us. So just like Jesus cared for Matthew, even when others didn't, we have Jesus in our heart. And so we need to be that friend to other kids who don't have good friends. Be that friend and be the one to show love. And I forgot, look, this is Jesus at Matthew's house. I forgot to open it. Ah, here he is sitting with Matthew and the other tax collectors shining God's light and love and saying, I choose you and I want to be your friend. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you for all these children and I pray that you fill their heart with love and peace and joy. I pray that every time they get sad, you would remind them that you care for them. That you would remind them of our verse in 1 Peter 5, 7, that you would fill their hearts with love and that when they think about making a bad decision, you would give them the strength to make a good choice, to show love and to share and be kind. And I pray that you would keep them safe always and give them your wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic, wonderful week. And I am always here for any questions. And if you're watching the video late, please feel free to still message. We love you and we'll see you next time. And again, please let us know if there's a better time that works for you. We'd love to accommodate that. God bless.